Generator, generator. Caution, caution. Welcome to this training session in which we will cover one of the signature capabilities of the AV-8B Harrier, the ability to perform missions from the Forward Operating Base, or a FOB. The FOB offers the MAGTAF Commander fixed-wing tactical assets carried with him from the ships of the amphibious ready groups to ashore at austere forward bases, allowing for quick repositioning of forces, rapid response to battle requirements, and enhanced survivability during counterattack. Basing flexibility is a cornerstone of VSTOL, or more accurately, Stovall, operations. Carrying tactical loads, Stovall aircraft can launch from unimproved surfaces of 1,500 feet or less, requiring no external arresting or launching devices. Stovall also offers carrier independence, and the opportunity for co-location with ground combat elements to enhance cooperative support, and direct involvement in ground combat operations planning. Dispersed forward bases are also less susceptible to enemy attack on known fixed locations such as air traffic control towers, communications facilities, and improved runways. Lastly, and likely most importantly, forward basing decreases the response time of tactical aircraft through the advantage of ground loiter and increased sortie rate. In this mission, you will start in a FOB established on an abandoned short airfield. You will prepare your jet in a normal manner, taxi to the starting point, and perform a short takeoff. Next, you will fly to another FOB, built around a stretch of road, and perform a rolling vertical landing there. Remember that FOB operations can be extremely challenging and dangerous, and therefore it is crucial to practice them as often as possible in different types of bases and under various conditions. You will be able to do so using shorter versions of this training mission. Okay, begin with the standard C waiver check. Normally, you would set up your clock, weapons, avionics, IFF, video recording system, countermeasures, and radar altimeter, but you can skip the weapons and countermeasures portion for this flight. Next, we will check our abort numbers for the field we're on. This is very important for FOB operations, so make sure you do it right. On the right MPCD, select Menu on push button 18, then VREST VRST, on push button 8, and Box Short Takeoff or STOW on push button 8. On the ODU, select Field Data or FDAT with ODU button 5, Colonize Runway Distance or RDIS with ODU button 1, and import runway length of 3200 feet into the scratch pad. Confirm your entry with the Enter button on the UFC. Next, Colonize Runway Heading, or RHDG, with ODU button 2, enter a runway heading of 026 degrees magnetic, and confirm your entry with the Enter button on the UFC. Now enter the wind. Colonize Ground Wind, or GWND, with ODU button 3, and enter a ground wind direction of 072 degrees magnetic and a magnitude of 004 knots and confirm your entries with the enter button on the UFC. Verify that dry runway, or RDRY, is colonized in ODU window 5 as we are experiencing dry runway conditions. If it isn't dry, press the button. Calculate your abort criteria by pressing the abort, or ABRT button, on push button 16 on your VREST stow page. Your abort speed, or ASPD, and stopping distance, SDST values will be displayed. Place your altitude, or ALT switch, in the radar, or RDR position. Make sure that your INS knob is in the IFA position and turn your approach light on. Alright, time for the standard takeoff checklist, which consists of another series of finger checks. The first check is a one finger configuration check, followed by a five finger wet acceleration check once you get to your starting position. Begin one finger checks by finding our wet nozzle rotation airspeed, or NRAS, on the VREST stow page on your right MPCD. Press the VSTOL master mode button to colonize the ODU with VSTOL options. Make sure that the nozzle rotation airspeed, or NRAS, next to ODU button 1 is colonized, and enter the calculated value in the scratch pad. Confirm entry with the Enter button on the UFC. 
Select Pitch Carrots, or PC, with ODU button 2 and verify a default setting of 14 degrees in the scratch pad. This sets the Pitch Carrots to 6 degrees above the horizon, where we will seek to place the Depressed Attitude Indicator, or Witch's Hat. Set the Short Takeoff, or Stow Stop lever to the Wet Nozzle, or NOZ value, calculated on the VRS Stow page on your right MPCD. This value cannot exceed 60 degrees, which is also the most commonly used value. Set flaps to stall, check that the flaps position indicator shows 25 degrees, and verify that no warning, caution, or advisory lights are illuminated other than droop, which can be on. Set the nozzle lever to the stow stop and verify that the engine display panel matches the HUD. Verify that the flaps adjust to 62 degrees and that the flaps indicator matches the HUD with droop light illuminated. Reset the nozzle lever to 10 degrees. Now you are ready to taxi. For FOB operations, you will always want to taxi with flaps in cruise mode, 5 degree nozzle angle and full nose down trim, with a maximum of 15 knots ground speed. Switch flaps to cruise, then set the nozzles and stabilator trim. Begin taxiing. Going very slowly, turn left and continue toward the end of the runway, staying close to the left edge. Use the NWS toggle button on your stick. Now stop and place the anti-skid switch in the NWS position. Advance the throttle and make a U-turn, pressing the NWS button on your stick to enter high gain mode. Do not exceed 3 knots ground speed in order to achieve a minimum radius turn. Let me know when you are aligned with the runway and ready to proceed. Time for a five finger check. When it is complete, you may proceed directly to short takeoff. Set flaps to stall, press push button 18 to enter the menu page, and then push button 11 to select engine, or ENG. Box Excel with push button 16. Hold the brakes and advance the throttle above 60%, and then bring it back to 60%. Check that the spool time listed is between 2.4 and 3.2 seconds. Arm the water switch to take off, or TO. After the RPM rises, reset it to 60%. Now place the nozzles at 30 degrees and check the duct pressure. Once verified, reset the nozzles to 10 degrees.
Finally, make sure that the EHSD is selected on the left MPCD. On the right one, select FLIR with sensor select switch right. This concludes the five finger checks. Ensure the anti-skid switch is in the on position. Last thing we need to do before takeoff is reset the stabilator trim to two degrees nose down. Do it now. Perform a maximum performance short takeoff, climb to 2,000 feet AGL and fly toward waypoint 1. Hold the brakes until the tires skid. I won't be giving you takeoff instructions as you should be able to do it yourself at this point. If you're not, I advise you to review the material presented in lessons 5 and 6. Alright, now we will cover landing at the forward operating base. There is no golden rule here. You will choose the type of landing that will seem the most adequate to the conditions that you find on the ground, as each FOB is different. In general, the most commonly used are different variants of short and vertical landings. If there is a runway or something resembling it, you will likely want to perform a fixed nozzle short landing, or FNSL. However, if the runway isn't long enough, or you are still carrying some ordnance, your best option will be a rolling vertical landing, or RVL, and that is what we are going to practice today. I said that there is no golden rule, but there are some guidelines you will always want to follow when operating on a FOB. First, you may wish to overfly your destination before attempting to land in order to assess the situation and conditions. The area around smaller air facilities or air sites is not normally as clear as that of a main base or airfield which means the approach end of a landing runway may be obscured from view by trees or terrain. The recommended overflight is made at 250 knots, 800 feet AGL, into the wind and offset from the landing zone for ease of observation. You may get advice from the LSS, but usually it is up to you to decide what to do. Second is a set of actions that are a standard procedure that has proven to be effective for all types of FOBs. Let's perform them now. First, select waypoint 2, which is your intended landing position. Set the course line to 074, which will be your runway heading. Next, you would set your take-in. We will skip this step as our destination does not have a station installed. During the day landing, make sure to have the EHSD page on the left MPCD. Set your HUD repeater on the right one. Now continue to waypoint 2 and conduct an observation overflight. You will be required to land on the part of the road cleared of all trees approaching from the west. The approach end of the landing strip is marked with red and white barrels. Once you have a good look, let me know and we'll go through the landing instructions. We have a preset waypoint at our intended landing zone, but in situations where a waypoint doesn't exist, you may opt to overfly the landing zone, use the mark or MK option on the EHSD page to help find the touchdown area and set up the pattern, and conduct a standard break 10 seconds past the intended landing point. 
All right, anchor east of the FOB, and we'll discuss the precision rolling vertical landing. You will enter the downwind leg flying at 600 feet AGL between 0.8 and 1 nautical mile from the runway. Complete the standard landing checklist, make sure that the flaps are stole and nozzles are at 60 degrees and water is set as required. For your convenience, the downwind leg distance is marked with green smoke. The key is located 3,500 feet from the designated landing point for this type of landing. You will pass it and soon after begin your descent off the 180. It will be marked with white smoke. You should arrive at the 90 degree position at 450 feet AGL and then get to the key at normal altitude of 325 feet. You will level your wings and put the TVV and witch's hat on the horizon. Next, you will use the nozzles to acquire 60 knots of ground speed. Once the 4 degree mark on the pitch ladder intercepts your intended landing point, reduce the power to begin your descent. You will place the velocity vector on the intended point of landing and then use the throttle and nozzles to maintain the glide slope of roughly 5 degrees and ground speed of 60 knots. You may need to react to any obstacles, such as trees at the end of the final stage of your approach. Slow down prior to touchdown, wait for the aircraft to settle on the runway, and use full wheel brakes to stop completely. If at any point you feel that something is wrong, wave off and try again. Let me know when you are ready to begin the landing. Alright, exit your orbit and enter the downwind leg flying from east to west at 600 feet. Position yourself between 0.8 to 1 nautical mile south of the runway. Green smoke marks exactly 1 nautical mile.
Perform a standard landing checklist. Deploy landing gear, set flaps to stall, and nozzles to 60 degrees. When ready and after passing the key, begin your turn. Arrive over the key at 325 feet AGL. Use the nozzles to set the speed of 60 knots and fly level until 4 degree mark on pitch ladder is over the desired landing spot. Begin your descent, keep the ground speed of 60 knots and watch for any obstacles. Try to land in the middle of the road. Power to idle, apply the brakes, trim the nose 4 degrees down. When ready, reset the nozzles to 10 degrees and turn off the water switch. Congratulations, this concludes the forward operating base training lesson. Next, we're landing on the boat. Seriously, they cut all these trees down just for one harrier to be able to land on a road. I mean, they've grown here for decades. They were planted in communist times. Well, I hope you at least get a nice bonfire out of it tonight. <laughs>